Wow, so they told me uh, Slash is like a rock concert, so I dress like a rock star. Thank you very much for having me here. It's such an honor to open this amazing conference. Uh, but I start with a very bad news. Transportation, as you know, it is broken. You know that. It starts with this big lie of automobile, right? They sell us these amazing scenarios where we will be driving in these lonely cities where there's no one basically around. And you're there, the wind is whipping on your face and everything is beautiful. And then you exit the reseller and that's what you get. Pollution, noise, overcrowded cities, they are basically exploding under our own mistakes. But if you think about automobile, the, the biggest lie is that this thing stays immobile for 90% of the time. So the reality is we build our cities around something that was already thought uh, to not to drive us around, but actually to be our problem. But if you're complaining about Singapore, it means only one thing. It means you've never been in China. Guys, these are ninja traffic jammers. They know how to do that shit. They've been stuck in traffic for 12 days. Welcome to China National Days, okay? I don't even want to know how they went to the restroom. I just want not to know. But Welcome to Beijing, guys. This is Beijing in a very good day. Because Beijing in a bad day looks like this. Just run against him, probably. I don't know. But the situation about transportation, it's all broken. If you think, OK, I'm not taking my car, OK? I'm just using underground. Well, let's see the undergrounds. We design systems that are not conceived to actually fulfill the amount of passengers that the cities are in. And that's the results. Everywhere in the world, even the most advanced, this is London, not even in a peak time. I was there two months ago. And this is the results, Sao Paulo. It, these are cities that are exploding of people. And there's no way to actually scale up. I have to admit, there are countries that solve the problem. For example, Japan, they fix it, OK? They have people with white gloves that push you inside, basically, the, but I don't think this is the future we want. I don't know if you agree with me. And if you look at the train industry, well, I can't, I can't really, do I have to speak about that? I mean, this is, uh, you know, India, but uh, Bangladesh, but it's happening all over the planet. The system itself is broken. Now you can say, okay, I'm not going to take anything on the ground. I fly, right? OK, let's look at the airport. First, 70% of the operation we do at the airport, you can actually do it even before you arrive there. Why? Why are they keeping us in line? And everything seems to know where you're going, except your luggage. You're staring the carousel while it's promptly, your luggage is promptly delivered in Botswana or somewhere. and, and but they're fixing it. They fix it because now we have amazing shops uh, that will resell your stuff uh, at 70% of discount. It's called uh, unclaimed luggage. And uh, we have some problem. OK. Unclaimed luggage. And these are 10 shops uh, in America. And they're building it all over the planet. So if you lost something, go there. It's a bargain. You can buy it back at 70% discount. Amazing. We fix it. That's amazing. It means they want to insert the mistake inside the system. And this is dramatic. Because if you think that we are dying from traffic, from road accident, from a percentage from 15 to 20 percent around the world. This is the biggest cause of that in the planet. But that doesn't really touch you. But if I would tell you, tomorrow is the last day of your life, you would be pissed. You would be disappointed. You start to think about all the things that you've never been able to do, and your family, your children, every single second will count, right? Well, if you're living in one of these cities, you're living one, two, three years less than was expected. 
And we think it's normal. We are becoming numb. I want you to think of me the next time you are bumper to bumper on the car thinking that maybe this is not the way we should live. And there are solutions, technical solutions, to actually fix it. This is not how humanity should end. And this is not how we, we want to end. So me and my co-founder, immediately after Elon Musk published the white paper, we thought it was a very good idea. But you know, it's a bold effort to actually build an hyperloop, something that is sustainable, is uh, connected, it's safe, uh, something that can actually reshape humans, how we move and how we design our cities. And we did it in a complete new way. Now, how many of you doesn't know what the Hyperloop is? Please, I, I, it's not, I'm not techie personal, so one, two, it's fine. Three, okay, four, okay. Security, remove this bastard, please. What the fuck? I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. For the one who doesn't know what the Hyperloop is, I have a video. The world is at a crossroads. Audio, please. At the brink of a historic breakthrough in mobility. Connectivity is everything. And now we are ready to connect people by a new form of transportation. It's called the Hyperloop, a system that moves people and goods on the ground at and beyond airplane speeds. And since 2013, Hyperloop transportation technologies has been at the forefront of making the Hyperloop system a reality. And we're building today. Utilizing a combination of existing and new technologies, including vacuum systems, magnetic levitation, linear motor systems, automation, and renewable energy, our Hyperloop system will be both high speed and resource efficient, with a safe and comfortable experience for passengers and cargo. Our system is designed for departures every 40 seconds at a maximum speed of 1200 kilometers per hour. It is capable of moving 164,000 passengers on a single line in one day. Hyperloop TT's technology breakthrough is a next generation passive magnetic levitation system. It's called Inductrack and it's revolutionizing transportation. Neodymium magnets in a haulback array enable passive levitation over an unpowered but conductive track. And as capsules move through the low pressure environment, they use very little energy en route, thanks to the reduced drag forces. The induct track system was tested and validated on a full scale passive levitation track. Hyperloop TT improved the technology and optimized it for a low pressure environment through testing in our prototype. Beyond induct track, our tech has already yielded 27 patents with further development taking place in our innovation hubs around the globe. To build this extraordinary system, Hyperloop TT has assembled an expert team of over 800 engineers, creatives, and technologists with unparalleled experience. We're also partnering and co-developing with the best companies in the world. Atkins, Isaiah, Legold, Carburas, Pacadar, Priestman Good, and Talgo are among the 40 best-in-class partners that are part of the Hyperloop TT core team. All have decades of engineering and manufacturing experience in critical industries like tunnels, tubes, aerospace, aeronautics, vacuum pumps, and pylons. The combined experience of our partners gives us the power to leverage decades of development and save millions in research. That's why our system is already feasible and insurable, according to Munich Re, the world's largest reinsurance company. The original Hyperloop company is about to bring the world closer together than ever before. Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. Exciting, right? So imagine how we passed from a white paper to actually start the construction of the first Hyperloop. I will be very quickly going into how we reach this amazing goal. First, uh, what we noticed at the beginning is that the technology that we needed to develop an Hyperloop was already there. But through a network of partners, uh, we did a call to action and we said, whoever wants to join the team, can we give you stock option in exchange, can actually 
become part of this amazing project. What happened is magic after. We have 45 of the top companies in the world participating. Imagine a capsule full of people. You put it inside the tube. You evacuate the air from the tube so there's no resistance. And now you can move the people from point A to point B at almost the speed of sound using a tiny fraction of the energy. The key is to actually build it on pylons. It will be better to build it underground, but it costs too much right now. There are companies that are working on it, but it's still too early. Building on pylons allow you to have less problems on right of ways, and you can use the existing right of way of highways, of uh, rails. You don't impede the animals to migrate. And we're using advanced material, like ultra high performance concrete, to have structures that can resist the 9.2 of the Richter scale and can actually scale up to seven tubes on the same pylon. Now, we are looking, of course, at different uh, situations, different cities, different terrains where we can build the Hyperloop. But imagine how we can redefine completely the concept of cities. This is a project that we are doing in uh, Ohio, in America. Imagine reconnecting cities that are 1,000 kilometers away and now become the same conglomerate. Imagine to connect Toronto, to Cleveland, to Chicago, and everything is in the range of 20 minutes. It's not a possible future. We are actually working to implement this technology. Even in America, this is one of the most conservative places to actually do a project like this. I have to run, unfortunately, so I can't show you all the videos, but uh, the concept of the Hyperloop is different. Imagine in the train, you move 1,000 people from point A to point B to point C, to point D, the problem, I have to do go to point Z. I have to stop all over the place. In the Hyperloop, is different. You have small capsule, 20, 30, 40 people. The first capsule will be uh, released right now in Spain, in Carbures. And in the next couple of weeks, you will see a big announcement on that. This small capsule can depart every 40 seconds. It means we can transport 68,000 people in the small version, 160,000 people in the big version, 24 million people a year. It means if we scale up, like Forrester says, we can for, uh, foresee to, to serve the entire planet. And we also redesign in the passenger experience. What would they do in the train industry or in the air industry doesn't make any sense. First class, second class, what does it mean? I need something different when I'm going to work than when I can come back to work. When I'm traveling with my girlfriend or boyfriend, I need something different than when I'm traveling with my boss or when I'm a tourist. So we are designing small spaces that can actually adapt to your need, even redefining the concept of passenger. We call it naked passenger. Not that you, you have to go undressed, no. It means you just need your biometry, and we create a smart contract through a blockchain, and we can give you amazing services. Now, we don't have Windows, but we have something better than a Windows. We, we call it augmented Windows, and it's a new space where we are creating, where you can look out, and there's a high-definition screen that can bring you wherever you want. You can see the outside, or a slower version of the outside, or where do you want to go? You want to go to Paris? You want to see Singapore 2,000 years ago, or I can bring you in the future, in the past. And this is not only a cool way to travel in the future, it's a new monetization system that maybe doesn't need tickets and only charges for premium services. That means an equal treatment even with the people that doesn't, can't afford to actually go in the Hyperloop. I have an amazing video. This is a world premiere here in Slash. Let's take a look. Imagine. Imagine a capsule. Imagine a capsule that can carry people. Placed inside a depressurized tube, the air removed to eliminate resistance. Not traveling on rails, but actually levitating above them. Capable of reaching airplane speeds and beyond on the ground. This is a Hyperloop, and it is amazing. Even more amazing, at Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, we haven't been imagining it. We've been building it for the better part of five years. And amazing is where we started. We're transforming the passenger experience, putting comfort and safety at the center of everything we're doing. 
Our reimagined linear electric motor is powered by sustainable solar energy, propelling the capsule on a completely new, incredibly efficient passive levitation system. With these two breakthroughs, our system is capable of giving energy back to the grid. And when something didn't exist, we invented it. Introducing Vibranium, a composite material that monitors speed, capsule integrity, and atmospheric condition in real time, a new benchmark in passenger safety. And we're not done. Our team of over 800 strong, a worldwide intellectual ecosystem of thinkers and problem solvers, tackle each day with the humble goal of changing the world. With its speed and efficiency, the Hyperloop will rewrite the rules of travel and mobility. But that's just one side of the story. There's another side that will have a far greater impact. It's the side that redefines how we connect with one another. Where distant friends become neighbors, countries become neighborhoods. And everybody who inhabits this big, crazy world of ours grows a little closer together. Just imagine that. So if you're not excited, you're dead, probably, because the amazing future is lurking, and we are working to bring it to su success. In the next few minutes, I will tell you something that is even more exciting than the Hyperloop, how we did it. Because this incredible project started with two people, me and my co-founder, but then became a movement. We now have more than 800 people working from 42 countries, and these are working to actually bring this technology alive. And I have a very nice news for you. First, uh, it's completely renewable. We're using a combination of renewable energy to have more energy that we consume. And this is the first system that actually does it uh, worldwide. And now we started to actually build it through an incredible network of companies and peoples and governments that are giving us funding and support to actually build the first one. Now, we have had the, the biggest crowdsourcing project in the planet. They are teaching us at Harvard and even the, the top companies in the world, uh, and the Sheikh Fala bin Zayed Al Nayan, the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi, actually joined our team. Even two astronauts of NASA now joined the team, and I've been able to uh, actually start uh, an amazing project, the Hyperloop Academy, to actually uh, push women and diversity and kids uh, into science because we need a new generation of scientists. Even Harvard teaching us and the World Economic Forum started an advanced mobility program where we are inserted. I will be speaking next week in China. Hyperloop is happening right now. We are now building, we have signed 11 countries and some of them are past the feasibility study and are now starting the commercial line. I want to leave you with this amazing news. We open a R&D center in Brazil for logistic to actually develop all the technologies to uh, uh, bring alive also the cargo and freight part. These are all volunteers, and this was the inauguration of the center. But in Toulouse is where the first uh, prototype is coming up. Uh, all the tubes that you've seen in the media are actually from there. This is me <laughs> inside the tube from Toulouse. But the big news is that uh, we signed the first commercial agreement. This was the first one in Ukraine, in China, and now in Abu Dhabi. Hyperloop is not a futuristic technology. It's actually happening right now, and we are building it. So we need your help. If you are a talent in disciplines of engineering, in software development, in design, and all the aspects that we need to actually build an Hyperloop, please apply to join the team. We need you here in Singapore to make it happen. There are people that are thinking about the future. We are building it. Thank you very much. Thank you.